Welcome to Rocks Talks, the podcast that helps network marketers grow their business on social media. I'm Roxanne Wilson, and I'm thrilled to be here with you and just me today. Yep, you're stuck with just me to talk to you about something very important. I've heard a lot of feedback from people saying, I don't know what to post right now, Roxanne. What do I post right now? Or why can't I figure it out? And so what I want to talk to you today is about is why you can't figure out what to post right now and how to get past that barrier. So let's dive in. Now, before we dive in, I want to just ask you how your hashtagging is going. Hashtag, how's it going? Hopefully it's going well, but if you just don't know what hashtags to pick or if the hashtags you're picking are working, I know I've been there, it's been a headache, and that's why I'm so glad I found SmartHash. SmartHash is the... Network marketers' secret weapon, letting you know not only how your hashtags are doing, literally it shows you how they're doing, but also giving you great advice on hashtags that I call like hashtag adjacent that will take you down another road of, uh, of finding hashtags that are really going to work for your content and help you find your target market. Hashtags is that step that you need. You know, you can have and do everything that I'm showing you on social media and get it right, but if nobody knows you're there like a tree falling in the woods. Did it fall? And that's why I love Smart Hash. To find out more about Smart Hash and to get the app yourself, go to rockstalkspodcast.com. Welcome back to the episode. So yes, the question people have been asking me or the issue that I'm seeing or hearing about is rocks. I don't know what to talk about. I have no idea what to post. And so I've been like a, like a, a hermit crab and I've done nothing, not a zilch. And now if you follow me on social media or you listen to the podcast, you know that everything I've been encouraging you to do is like use this time that we are quarantined to get things done, to get in motion. But that's easier said than done if you just can't get out of the mud. And so I'm going to challenge you and say that the number one reason that people cannot figure out what to post right now truly is the fact that you don't have a brand. You don't have an identity. I mean, let's go back for a second. You're like, wait, what? Hold on, hold on. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Breathe in the bag. It's going to be okay. But think about this for a second. Before the quarantine, the lockdown, Um, you may or may not have been posting a lot about your business. Maybe your business was all your posting on social media. I hope not, but you probably were doing it a lot. Um, And it was very direct. And now, you know, it's just not appropriate to be doing that all the time. So you're like, I don't know what to post then. I've got nothing to talk about. That's because you don't know your brand. That's because your identity has gotten too interlocked with your network marketing company. And listen, I understand why. You start a network marketing company and you're told to be coachable. And being coachable means stop thinking for yourself and start doing what other people did and said that worked. So take these scripts and copy these scripts and and do them automatically. So see that post and either like totally knock that post off or do something close to it or see what your network marketing company is posting and repost that. Well, that's the problem because you were... Before you joined your network marketing company, you were an actual whole human being. And it just happens that we lose that whole, we lose ourselves to take on that company. I don't want to see that happen. You know, you know me. I want you to be the CEO of your own business. And in order to do that, you've got to find your identity and your identity is not your company. So the great thing is that right now you have a unique opportunity to really focus on figuring out what I've called your, I've called superpower, your brand, those words you've heard me say, and figure it out. Like figure it out. Take that time. Since lockdown, um, all the podcasts have, have given you a like, okay, yeah, I've, I wanted to start a podcast or all the episodes have, or yeah, I want to get my YouTube going or yes, I've been thinking about Pinterest. How can I do those things or get deeper into what I'm doing right now on social media? And so that's fantastic. Well, maybe for you, the thing that you need to take time doing like right now is figuring out who the heck you are and figuring out how to then, then articulate that into the world. Now I did this exercise um, with some of my my members, and one of them said, 
she said, oh, my identity or my brand, who I am is I help, I help teens find great skincare. And I had to step back and go, but who were you before that? Or what do you love about that? Because that is not, and yes, she sells skincare. That's not her brand. That's something she happens to do, but that's not her brand. So this is going to take some time. What I want you to do, first of all, is say, because it's, it, listen, some people are going to figure it out immediately. Some people, it's going to be the journey, but it's not about how fast you get there. It's not about what's waiting on the other side. It's the, say it with me now, climb. Thank you, Miley Cyrus. So say to yourself, I am excited about this journey of figuring out what my brand is. Like say that. I know it's not going to happen. It may not happen automatically, but I know it's going to happen. And every step I take on the road to figuring out my, my brand, my identity is a, is a step that's going to get me in the right direction of figuring out my purpose and giving me fulfillment. So here are three ways that I want you to implement right now to help you figure out the brand. Once you realize it could take some time, that's okay. Number one, I want you to really do this exercise and it's not a new exercise. It's not earth shattering, but it's an exercise that is going to help you. I want you to either go for a walk or go somewhere quiet. Maybe it's the closet where <laughs> you were able to get some silence, silencio before and Ask yourself, take some paper if you want to do as well too, and write this down. What makes you, or what are you passionate about? And deeper than that, what do you love? What do you know? And what gets your juices going? Those are three different things, y'all. Yeah, I know law, but it doesn't get me going or I'd still be a lawyer, right? So what do you know? What do you love and what gets you going? And it's okay if you don't know it, like maybe you're like, I love, I have a friend who's a great, um, and she's so passionate about, about um, surfing. She didn't know that till a couple of years ago. Didn't know that till recently, but now she knows. So it's okay if you're like, I'm not that great at, at it, but I, I really love it. So, but what do you know? And maybe it's not only what do you know, but what do you know you like? What do you love? Or what do you know intrigues you? What do you love? And what gets your juices going? And if it's more than one thing, write all those things down, write it all down, all of it. Okay. In there somewhere is either your, your superpower or it's evidence of what your superpower is. What do I mean by that? Well, if I, and I, I've personally had to go through this journey um, as I, you know, when you leave law and you're going to be a Supreme Court justice and that was all you ever wanted to be that in a talk show host and you leave, you got to find, and everyone thinks you're crazy. You, you have a lot of soul searching to do. Yes. I'm talking about myself personally. And so you ask yourself, what gets you going? What are you passionate about? What is it that you really want to do or you love doing through that? I realized that my passion is, is empowering people and educating people and like, and helping them be their better selves. That's what I loved about law. That's what I love about making that difference. That's what I love about, about doing, being a radio host, about being a TV show host. That's what I love about everything I've done in my past. It all clicked and made sense. I'm like, oh, okay, it took me a while. It was a journey. It's a journey. So ask yourself, you have a bunch of different things. Like, what is it? What is the thing about all these things that I love that I'm passionate about? Ask yourself what that is. Now, if you do step one and you're like, Roxanne, not a zilch, a butt kiss, that means you're, hot, you're blocked. And that's okay because you have people in your lives who are willing to help you with that. Ask your family, ask your friends, ask people who really know you. What is it that I, if you, if, like, what's, what do you think is my thing? What's my thing? This is number two. You're going to ask other people, what's my thing? What do you, what's the thing that you go to me for? Cause you know, I'm going to be an expert in it and I can help you out with it. And I've got you back, your back, or you ask me advice on, and what's the thing that you see me glow when I get so excited about it? And you're like, okay, enough, Roxanne. What is the thing? Ask them, ask them those questions, ask them the same questions you ask yourself. Okay. And again, you might ask a few of them. It might be a journey. That's okay. Take that information that they give you and then really go back and ask yourself, do those things light me up? Do those things get me excited? Are those the things? 
And the third thing I want you to do once you've got some type of semblance of this could be it is I want you to try it on. What? Yeah, I want you to try it on. I know in an age where we like to buy a lot of things online, we don't get to try it on the dressing room very much, but I want you to try your brand on in the dressing room. The dressing room of social media of life, baby. Where I want you to go, okay, this is what I think my brand is. So I'm going to start talking about and sharing about this thing. And so create a week's worth of content that has in mind the fact that you believe your passion is to do X, Y, or Z. If you've decided your passion, for example, is helping others understand like the value of, I don't know, clean beauty or of a clean diet, then think about how you can articulate that and take them on that journey in a week and do that content. I'm going to tell you right now, if it's something you are not passionate about, even like writing the content for a week, you're like bored now, in the, in the words of Drew. Um, or you might go, oh, I like this. I could talk about this, this, and that. See how it makes you feel to write that content. And then actually, if you're not stuck in the mud, you like, I can't even get any that. If, I can't, if you can't get past that hump, listen, if you know in that moment, that's not it, go back to step one and two, rinse and repeat. If you work on step three and you're testing it out and you're writing that content or coming up with what you're going to write about and you're like, oh, I like this, then do it for a week. Do it for a week and see how it feels. I promise you, I love, you know, I love talking. (laughs) I love podcasting. I love doing live videos. So there is nothing that's not even a bad hairstyle is going to stop me from doing that. No excuses out there. I'm like jazz and let's get it done. Why? Because that's part of my passion. That's part of what gets me going. So I'm going to tell you right now, if you're like, "Mm, uh, well, eh, eh, uh, uh, uh," or oh, I'll do anything. I'll clean my house as long as I don't have to post something about X. And that's probably not your passion. Can we agree on that? If it works on you for a week and you've enjoyed it, then do it another week. And try this on and see if that's where where you are. Here's the great thing. If you've gotten to the point where you you do it for another week, suddenly you're posting. Look at that. Look what you just did. Look, you got, what did we start this? Why you're not posting? And you started posting. And even if you post for a week and you realize this is not it, you've started posting. You are doing the journey. You're making it happen. Now, I would not be surprised I'm going to go back to step one for a second. I'm not surprised if you already know the answer. Yeah, you know the answer, but something has stifled you from being able to stand in the truth of your superpower and stand in the truth of your brand because you're afraid of fill in the blank. You're afraid of what other people might think. You're afraid you might get rejected. You're afraid you might not be good at it. You're afraid, you're afraid, you're afraid. You are uniquely you. So no one can tell a story like you can. No one can share whatever it may be like you can. So when you sit there and decide you're not going to do it because people might or it might or rejection or whatever, you're depriving us all of the reason that you are here. So please don't do that. Please share with us. We need to hear you. Yes, you, specifically you. And if you're watching, you know I'm looking you right in the eye right now and I'm talking about you. I thought I just headbutted you. (laughs) So get that message out there. Okay. So these are the three things you're going to do. You're going to take that time and start asking yourself those questions about what you love, what you know, and what gets your juices flowing. And write that down and take a look and see if you see that pattern. You see if you see that there's something going on here. I'm seeing something rocks. Number two, ask people. Ask people that know you what they, you know, what makes you tick, ask them what you're known for, what they, what they go, your go, their go-to for, ask them those things. And then number three, when you feel like one and two might have something that kind of looks fuzzy, but looks like it might actually be more than just a blob, try it on. Start writing content and go through that journey and then get that content out there and test and see if that's what it is. Okay. And again, it could be that thing that you've always known, just like Dorothy, she always had the ability to go home. It was in her shoes. It was always there. 
this is all, this was, has been in with you even before Dorothy's shoes. Since birth, this has been in you. It's just a matter of you going through the process to find it and then share it. And when you share it, you share it from the right rooftops. Shout it, share it from the rooftops. Now I have some homework for you. You're like, what? This is not a one-on-one session. What is she doing? Well, I want to know how this is going. I want you to figure out your brand and your superpower. So do me this favor. When you find it, message me and say, it's, say la vie. It is, this is not such as life, but it is this. This is my superpower. This is my brand. When you start the journey, whether you find it or not, I want you to say, I'm on the journey, Roxanne. I don't know what it is yet, but I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to figure this out. Please email me, Roxanne at RoxanneWilson.com or just go to Instagram and hit at RoxTalk and DM me. I really am invested in you and you getting to a point where you can share your superpower with us and with the world. So please let me know. I want to root you on and go on that journey with you. Okay. We're going to be right back with a tech tip and, um, well, we're going to mindset moment slash what's going on right now. We'll be right back. All right. Welcome back to the tech tip. Now, for those of you who do Instagram lives, or if you did the 30 day Instagram live challenge, um, that we did last month, um, you know that I'm not a lover. I love, I I love Instagram. I don't love Instagram lives. Why? Well, they only last 24 hours and that gets on my nerves because you're putting out good content. It's only there for 24 hours. It's like, really? But there's something that they just added that I am digging and I love. And if you enjoy doing IG lives, you're going to love it too. You can now add a still picture to your live. Say what? Yes, you can. You can now add still pictures to your lives, which is so fantastic because it's almost like a subtitle where people know what your topic is and it's really going to help you out. If you want to know how to do that, go to rockstalkspodcast.com. I've created a video for you so you can see exactly how it's done. You'll love it. All right. So um, mindset moment, mindset moment today is going to, and I don't know why I said it like, Oh, I didn't mean it that way. Um, so the mindset moment might bleed a little bit into, um, where I am right now. So I'm just warning you, but for when I'm recording this, I'm on day 35 of being locked down in my house and, um, that's okay. It's worth it. Um, but I know that we go through the different stages and there's days where we love it. There's days where we're like, get us out, let us out, let us out. I'm talking about all of us, right? Collectively. And there's days where we feel like we should be doing more. We felt we're going to get more done during this and days where we're like, I'm rocking it. One thing that has really helped me during this is to give myself grace and give others grace too, which also means giving like Scott, who we're in the same, we're just in the same space together, some grace, because we're going through a lot, right? And so I say that because more specifically about business, because you have these, I have these ideas of all these things that I'm going to accomplish and get done, and it doesn't all get done. When I turned the switch last month and said, um, okay, I am going to put, make a list of what I want to get done this week. I'm going to schedule out time. And I'm going to see what happens. I took that and did that for about a week and started to get a really good sense of being more organized, which is always nice, but of how much time I needed to do things and how that might be different these days, right? And so based on that, that's how I set up my next week. And I would take the time to look at what did you achieve? What did you get done? What did you not think you were going to get done? Like it wasn't even on the radar, but you got done. What got in your way? And how can you make, this next week successful. So I have to tell you now being four weeks in, I'm like looking at my list of things I wanted to get done in a week. I'm like, dang girl, you accomplished a lot. And it was manageable and I feel more productive. So giving myself grace and not expecting to get it all done. So yeah, there's some things that don't get done and I put them on the next week, but not expecting to get it all done 
but saying, did I do the best that I could? And did I still make sure I gave time to the different things in my life, different aspects of my life, to my family? Did I give time to Scott? Did I give time to um, different aspects of my business? Did I give time to working out? I wasn't doing that at the beginning of this because I just like, I want my gym. I don't really want to do it. Now I've told myself, Roxanne, last week it was three times a week. I'd work out at least three times a week um, and then go walking with Scott at least twice. This week, I am bumped it up to four. And you know what? Giving myself that time, also give myself time for like self-care. Like I literally look forward to my shower now because I'm like, I'm going to do different things to my face. Like seriously, like I'm excited about these gadgets and whatnot. I'm just spending that time. I'm going to do my hair, whatever it might be giving myself that spa me time. So give yourself grace. Don't expect that you're going to get all hundred things done, even during this entire time. That's not realistic. And adjust. You got to pivot just like we're pivoting now. Pivot to what you can actually get done in your space with your people. Still being an amazing woman, amazing partner, amazing mom, but also being an amazing businesswoman. And sometimes it's doing less, but knowing that it's okay because it is. All right. And last but not least. Oh, get a little emotional. I want to take a moment and do a very special shout out. Um, again, well, we're recording this on April 20th. On April 18th, my mom's cousin, my cousin, um, Debbie Ann, we call her cousin Debbie, passed away from COVID. And You know, it's funny because you take it for granted. You take it for granted. And especially like we all have like our immediate family that we're like in and we see and we're, you know, whatever it may be, but we take the rest a little bit for granted. And I, I just want to encourage you guys, don't take any of it for granted. Take that moment and reach out to that friend, that family member, that distant family member, whatever it may be. Take time to do that because you just don't know. I'm going to tell you a little about her because she rocked the Casbah. Nurse, spicy, so much energy and, and um, enthusiasm about life and all things. She'd always tell you how it was. But one of the things I want to share with you about her is that she's a nurse in a nursing home in New York and they got hit hard with COVID. So hard that 40 of their, I think there were 60 residents, 40 of them died from COVID. It was so bad that when they called the coroner to pick up the bodies, they said, it's going to be a few days or more. So you need to leave them in their beds and open the window. Her coworkers stopped coming, refused to show up. My cousin Debbie kept showing up, kept serving those she could and kept doing her best. And it was even to the extent that when she wasn't on duty working at the nursing home, she was taking people she cared about who were sick, checking in on them, taking them to get tested and making sure they got treatment. She did that dutifully and with heart until she herself um, fell ill. And last Tuesday, she went to the hospital and she passed away four days, five days later. So this is to, I, I just say this because I want you to know her and her name and who she was and also to thank her for a life so well lived and even to the end, caring about others. That's something that I can be proud of and we all can. So here's to you, Debbie, and enjoy heaven. Heaven is having a great time because you're there. Thanks so much for listening to Rocks Talks. Um, I can't wait to see you guys next week. And remember, you're not ahead. You're not behind. You're exactly where you're meant to be. And I'm honored that you're here with me. I'll see you next time. Bye.